Hello, one P, and welcome to adding polynomials. Uh, after today, you should be able to say, I know what a polynomial is, and I can add two of them together using the rules of collecting like terms, uh, also known as simplifying. So when you hear the word simplifying, I'm talking about collecting like terms, putting stuff together to make it look more compact and simpler. So we're going to talk about a little bit of terminology first so that when I say polynomial, you don't say, what? When a bunch of terms are linked by addition or subtraction, the expression formed is called a polynomial. So we're going to give you a few examples, starting with one term. One term is called a monomial, and one term could be just a two. Uh, whoop. Where is my... Uh, it could just be a 2. In that case, it's a constant term. Uh, it could be a 2x, and then it has a variable with it. It could even be a 2xy. The thing here is that they're all linked by multiplication. This means 2 times x, whatever that is. We don't know what it is. It could be anything. It could be 5, could be negative 5, could be 100, could be 2 fifths. You know, we don't know what it is. It's an unknown. It's a placeholder. Okay, but the operation between the 2 and the x is multiplication, and the operation between the x and the y is also multiplication. So those are linked by multiplication. Now when you get two terms together, you could have the 2xy like we had before, but we're going to link something else to it, like say a 4. We could add a constant term on the end. Uh, this now has two terms because we've got this separated from this with the plus sign. When you have two terms, um, it's called a binomial. You know, a bicycle has two tires. A binomial has two terms. Now, once you've got three terms, we could have 2xy. Uh, we could say plus 4x and plus 3x. No, it can't be plus 3x. This isn't a trinomial. Well, it is a trinomial, but it's actually an unsimplified binomial because these have like terms. Remember that from the last lesson? They're like terms. I could put them together. Those could be 7x rather than 4x plus 3x. They could be 7x, and then it would just be two terms. So uh, I'm going to do something like give it an exponent there. So if I give that an exponent of 3, uh, now it's different from all of the other ones. So it's three terms. Now, when you have three terms, it's called a trinomial. Let's go back to our example. A tricycle has three tires, so a trinomial has three terms. Okay, so that's a little bit of terminology. A polynomial is in simplified form if there are no like terms in the string of terms. Now, the first one I gave you up here, when I gave you this, when I didn't put that on there, that is in unsimplified form. It is an unsimplified binomial because I can put those two terms together. But if I put this 3 here, now none of these things are like. None of them are like, so I can't put them together, so it is in simplified form. Sometimes we want to add two simplified polynomials together. So I'm going to pull this all the way down. There's our two simplified polynomials. We know they're simplified, and we know there's two of them because of the brackets. And if we look at this bracket, there's no like terms in that bracket. I mean, these two things have x's, but this has a squared and this doesn't, so they're different. And I can't put them together. I can, I've got to stress that, I cannot put them together if they don't have the same exponents. Uh, and the other one is the same thing here. I've got 3x squared, a negative 6, and a 2x. So we've got two techniques that I'm going to talk about for doing this. The first technique is just to remove the brackets and simplify. So if I'm going to remove the brackets and simplify, I'm just going to take the brackets off. Those brackets really actually aren't doing anything, so I'm just going to take the brackets off and say 2x squared minus 5x plus 3, and then I have plus 3x squared minus 6 plus 2x. Now if I'm going to simplify, I'm going to take my red pen here, this 2x squared is the same kind of term as the 3x squared. And if I put a 2x squared with a 3x squared, and let's, well, let's just, uh, just write that out. And I'm going to keep using my red pen. 2x squared 
plus 3x squared. I'm going to write them side by side. Uh, then I'm going to take my blue pen because I get a negative 5x and a positive 2x. So let's write them side by side. Negative 5x, positive 2x. Those are the same terms. And let's take the green and let's circle that because I get a positive 3 and a negative 6. They're both constant terms. They don't have a variable with them. So I get plus 3 minus 6. Now all of these things I'm going to, um, the ones that are the same color are in like terms so I'm going to add them together and be very very careful of my integers. If I've got 2x squareds and someone gives me 3 more x squareds, I now have 5x squareds. Moving on to the blue, if I have negative 5x's and someone gives me 2x's, well, these 2x's, they're positive, so they're going to cancel out two of those negatives. So I'm left with minus 3x's. And then on the end, a plus 3 with a negative 6. Well, if I'm at 3 and I go backwards six spaces on the number line, I get negative 3. So this is my simplified polynomial, and I can't go any further. I cannot add those together. Don't do it. Don't even think about doing it. You cannot put these together at all. This is as simple as it gets. It's got to have three terms with the minuses in between them. You can't put them together. They are not like terms. This one has a 2. This one doesn't have a 2. We can't do it. It's like apples and oranges being in a basket. I could put five apples in and three oranges in, and I still just have five apples and three oranges. They don't change into something else. You cannot shove them together. Now, technique number two, some people like it this way. This isn't the way I would do it, and it's not the way I would encourage you to do it, but if you um, like it better and you understand it better, then by all means use it. We're going to line up the like terms vertically when I, when I take the brackets off. So I'm going to have 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. And then I'm going to write the next one underneath it, li carefully lining up. So I put the 3x squared under that. And the negative 6 is going to have to go under the positive 3 because those are the constant terms. And then the positive 2x is going to go under the 5x because those match. And then I'm going to add them, kind of like you would have done um, two or three digit numbers on uh, in, in elementary school. So now we just add down. And you got to be careful of your integers, but you just add down. So when I add down, 2 plus 3 is 5, and we still have that x squared. Negative 5 and positive 2, these po two positives cancel two of those negatives, which means I have negative 3x. And then I've got a positive 3 and a negative 6 gives me negative 3. And notice I got the same answer. Didn't matter which way I did it, I got the same answer. So you pick whichever one you like the best. But just remember here, see how I switched these two things around? Well, you have to do that. You got to switch those, you got to line them up so that the like terms are the same. Okay, we've got a few things to do here. Add the following polynomials. I'm going to do these the two different ways. The first one, I'm just going to take the brackets off. So I'm going to take the brackets off and I get 2x squared plus 7x minus 20. And when I take these brackets off, first of all, I'm not going to write plus negative x squared. No, because adding negatives is a bad thing. So it's just negative x squared and minus 5x and minus 3. Now if I put together the like terms here, here's a 2x squared and a negative x squared. So I'm going to write them side by side, 2x squared minus x squared. Then I have a positive 7x and a minus 5x. So I'm going to write plus 7x minus 5x. And then lastly, I have this minus 20 and minus 3, so I'm going to put minus 20 and minus 3. So now when I add them up, 2x squared minus x squared is simply um, x squared. 7x minus 5x is plus 2x. And negative 20 minus 3 is negative 23. 
Now the second one I'm going to line up vertically. So I'm going to say 8x squared minus 4x plus 9. And when I line them up vertically, I've got to make sure that the x squared goes under the x squared. So I got 12x squared. And the 6x goes under the 4x, so I get plus 6x. And then there's nothing here, so it's like a plus 0 on the end there. 0 is just your placeholder. Okay. And now we're going to add them up vertically. So when I add them up vertically, I get 20x squared. And you got to be careful with this one, plus 6x minus 4x. These four negatives take away four of those positives, and so I'm left with only positive 2x, and then 9 and 0 is just plus 9. And now we have kind of an application type question. Uh, what is the perimeter of the following rectangle? Well, to find the perimeter of a rectangle, uh, I hope you remember this, 2L plus 2W. 2 length plus 2 width. So I've got to take 2 of the length, so 2x plus 6, sorry, minus 6, and add in another 2x minus 6. And now I need 2 of the lengths. So I need plus x plus 8 and another x plus 8. Well, how many x's do I have total? I've got a 2x and a 2x is 4x, 5x, 6x's, 6x. X. And then I've got negative 6, and negative 6 is negative 12. And add 8 gets me to uh, negative 4. And then add another 8 gives me to positive 4, so I go plus 4. Use your answer from A to find the perimeter of 5. So my answer from A says that the perimeter equals 6x plus 4. That's the perimeter. Now, what does it mean if x equals 5? Well, we're assigning x an actual value. Remember, x can be anything, and we've come up with a formula for x to be anything, so now we just want the specific um, case where x is 5. So if I say 6 times 5 plus 4. And remember, this is 6 times 5. Remember your order of operations. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 4 is 34. So the perimeter is 34, and this didn't have a value with it. If this had said meters, then I would have to put meters here as well. And here's our last question. Can you find two polynomials whose sum is 4x squared minus 9x? 4x squared minus 9x. Now, this one, if this were in your textbook, the back of it would say, answers may vary. You might not like questions like that, but uh, let's think of this. I got two things lined up, and they have to add to 4. Um, so we could take 2 and 2, and remember they need x squareds. Now we need two things lined up that add to not negative 9x. So we could have negative 10x and a positive x. Because if I have 10 negative x's and then I throw a positive x on top of it, or it could be other things. You never know. And there's nothing on the end. So we might have two polynomials that have nothing here, but maybe, maybe they're opposites of each other. Maybe we have a plus 3 and a minus 3, so that when plus 3 and minus 3 go together, they cancel each other out, so that could be it. These could be our two polynomials. They satisfy this condition. They have a sum, and remember, sum is a fancy word meaning add. Okay, They have a sum of 4x squared minus 9. So do the ones that didn't have the plus 3 and minus 3 on the end. They satisfy the condition. So which one was right? They both were. This is one of those kind of questions where we're asking you to think outside the box and just come up with uh, with your own thing. Um, is there any other one we could have done here? Well, sure there is. What other ways can I add to 4? Uh, I could take 5x squared and a negative x squared. If I have a 5x squared and a negative x squared and I put them together, I get 4x squared. What other ways could we get to negative 9? Well, we could have negative, uh, negative 3 and negative 6. 
because negative 3 and negative 6, they add to negative 9. Okay, so you get the idea here. I just want two things that add up to that. And of course, remember, we could have something on the end there too, as long as it cancels out, So because our answer doesn't have anything there. So we could have, um, let's try plus 11, minus 11. So there's our two polynomials. And we've had quite a number of polynomials here that satisfy this condition. And that brings this video to an end.